All right. Um, well, I don't have any slides for this talk. This is purely in code spaces. Uh, they told me not to have slides and only gave me like 12 to 15 minutes. So we're going to try and speed run this. Um, so I have this React web app with a Python API, and it's using MongoDB. And I'm going to show you how we can get this up on Azure with one step and in just a couple minutes with the Azure Developer CLI. Um, and so if you're unfamiliar with the Azure Developer CLI, well, how many of you know what the Azure Developer CLI is? Not Azure CLI, but the Azure Developer CLI. All new folks, I love it. So the Azure Developer CLI is a command line tool that is a bit higher level application developer friendly. So um, I have AZD installed here in my code space as a result of having a nice dev container configuration. So I opened this repo in code spaces and had every dependency that I need for this application, including the Azure Developer CLI installed for me. Um, and so you'll look at our, our commands here and they're like really high level, right? So you're seeing things like init, you're seeing provision, deploy, up, down. Um, we intend to keep things super high level and application developer friendly, so they map to kind of key stages in your development workflow. And I think that a lot of folks are familiar more with kind of interacting with atomic resources on Azure, right? So you're like in the command line, touching individual resources, passing in a bunch of flags and parameters, and maybe hopefully you remember them all. Um, but with the Azure Developer CLI, we we kind of obfuscate some of that away. Um, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into how we do that in just a second, but I'm going to kick off a deployment here. Um, and I mentioned before that we have the Azure Developer CLI installed. We also have the Azure Developer CLI extension for VS Code installed. Um, and so because um, I have an Azure.yaml, and I'll explain about what that is in a second, I can right click on my Azure YAML and then hover and see that I have an Azure Developer CLI entry in my context menu, and then a bunch of AZD commands, which are the same AZD commands that we saw in our terminal. And so I'm gonna run a command called azd up. And um, this is really like the most magical command that the Azure Developer CLI has. And I say that because we really strive to be non-magical um, and really orchestrate things on Azure on your behalf in a way that is very transparent. And so um, the, way, the reason this is magical, I guess, is because we're stitching three commands into a single command, single gesture. So this command will package our application, uh, provision infrastructure, and deploy our application code with AZD app. So I'm asked for an environment name. This is really, if I uh, enter a, a question mark, uh, it's really just a string that we're going to use for part of the resource group name, which is a nice little container for all of our resources on Azure. So I'm going to call this like Savannah build live demo or, so, or just build live. That's kind of long. Um, I'm, I'm already authenticated, so now I have my Azure subscription. And then I'm going to select a region. I'm going to select a region that's not the current region that we're in because I'm scared of capacity issues because of build. <laughs> but I'm going to click West Europe. And now AZD is going to go off and do a bunch of work for me. We're going to package this app up. Um, we're going to provision infrastructure. We're going to deploy our app. OK, now you're wondering, that seems way too easy. Where did all the complexity of Azure go, right? And so uh, the way we get a the way we kind of like operate here is a much more declarative model than using kind of imperative commands in the command line. Um, and so if I click into this repo, I have an Azure.yaml, which is a kind of Azure Developer CLI convention file. It's kind of like a manifest for AZD to know what application code we're building, what language our project is, and what service we want to host stuff on. So in this case, we have a web service for our front end, which is a React, which is React, so it's JavaScript. We're going to be hosting it on app service. We have a Python with fast API backend, um, and it's going to, obviously we're going to use Python there, and then also on app service. Um, we are also pointing AZD at the directory where our application code lives. So in this case, we have an SRC directory with an API subdirectory and a web subdirectory. Um, and AZD doesn't mandate any particular application structure. You can do whatever it is that you want. Um, you just need to be able to point AZD to where your app code lives when you pass in uh, the paths in the Azure.yaml. Um, that's kind of like the first main requirement of the Azure Developer CLI. The second is an infra directory. Um, our infra directory programmatically defines all of our infrastructure in code um, using either BICEP, which is a domain specific language used for provisioning Azure infrastructure, or in Terraform. Um, in here, if I scroll through, I'll see things like resource group, I'll see web and API, which correspond to our front end and back end. I'll see Key Vault, which is a security best practice. We don't want to be inlining our tokens and passwords. Um, we also have a Cosmos DB uh, 
We're gonna, we're gonna create Cosmos DB with a MongoDB API for our database, all this good stuff. Um, and so as an application developer, you might be wondering like, what if, like, what if I don't know infrastructure as code? Like, what if I don't want to figure out all of this stuff right off the bat? And that's sort of the point. So we have this open source kind of ecosystem of templates. This is actually an Azure Developer CLI compatible repo or AZD template. And the idea is that you find a template on GitHub um, or through our open source template gallery, which I'll share a link to at the end, which maps to your local application stack. And then you can rip out the source code. So we have an SRC directory with this API and web. We're gonna, this is gonna create like a to-do application. But you might not care about the to-do part, but you actually just care about getting your app on Azure. And so that the idea is that you get to piggyback off of all of these infrastructure as code assets uh, and hit the ground running on day zero without having to figure out, okay, what resources do I need? How do they wire up? Am I doing things securely? All of that. So AZD really just take care, take, does really is just orchestrating stuff on your behalf and just providing you with like a really solid foundation to work from. So we have packaged our application. We ran uh, AZD package as part of AZD app. We also ran, we're now running AZD provision. And as this kind of progresses, you're gonna see like human readable names for your resources, as well as like a unique identifier that you can reference to in the Azure portal, which is what that link is above. I'm not gonna go to the Azure portal. I'm only gonna do that once this session. I promise I'm not gonna like click off and uh, outside of code spaces, but we wanna keep, uh, stay in our, in our editor. So I'm gonna do that but I could monitor more detailed progress there as well. So um, because we are operating on conference Wi-Fi and, uh, <laughs> and I wanted to make sure I could finish this, I do have a completed version of this application. By the end of this, we'll have deployed the app uh, in the other window, but I wanted to make sure we could get through all of it. So um, this instance of the app actually has our application deployed. As part of our uh, process, we actually create this, this directory, this azure.azure .azure directory. Um, which has a subdirectory that corresponds to that environment name I provided earlier, and then a bunch of, a, a couple of pieces of environment metadata, a couple of environment variables. Um, after we've done our provisioning and deployment of the application, we have a lot more stuff happening in here, and this is all coming from our infrastructure as code. It includes that same, those same like region, um, environment name and subscription metadata as well. But now we also have endpoints that um, would be printed out for us at the completion of our deployment. So I have uh, an open API or .yaml or swagger.yaml that I can explore these endpoints for this to-do app, as well as a fully fledged application running on Azure infrastructure. So this isn't just like a hosted app, this is fully wired up to a database. We create all the right rules and permissions for you. So now you're basically set up for success. Uh, and that's kind of like the, you know, the, the, the gist of what it means to be cloud native, right? Build, building apps using meaningful Azure infrastructure the right way the first time. So, so yeah, so we, we've done our, our packaging, provisioning, um, deployment. We've also talked a little bit about infrastructure as code and AZD templates. The next thing I wanna show is that we also uh, created a monitoring, monitoring infrastructure and dashboard as part of that provisioning process. And so this is the only time in the demo I'm gonna go off into the Azure portal, but I'm gonna be brought directly to the right page in the Azure portal. Um, so I'm gonna right click on my Azure YAML again, click this Azure Developer CLI entry, and then go to monitor a deployed application. I'm gonna accept to go to the overview dashboard. It's probably gonna make me authenticate. Um, and then now we have a dashboard that has usage, reliability, and responsiveness metrics for our application. Um, this is a really solid foundation for you to build on. This exists because I had this defined in my infrastructure as code, but now I can see all this stuff that usually takes folks a long time to create dashboards, write queries, um, and so I, I think this is a huge time saver. It's also really nice that I didn't have to like click through the Azure portal to find the right place uh, for my, my dashboards. Um, so yeah, this is uh, kind of the monitoring support that AZD has. Um, and then finally, I wanted to talk about uh, pipelines and CI CD. So it's great that we were able to like provision and deploy an app on Azure, right? Um, but in the real world, we probably wanna run our deployments from a CI CD pipeline. Um, and so AZD also supports that. And what's kind of cool about all of this is that AZD, has the same commands uh, running regardless of the client application. So um, I'm being asked to take a survey for my product. Um, <laughs> PM life. Um, 
But basically, uh, we use the same commands regardless of the client application. So whether you're in VS Code, Visual Studio, GitHub Actions, Azure Pipelines, and whatever terminal you're using, same commands under the hood, ultra transparent. Um, so I, in this template, have also a GitHub Actions workflow defined for me. Um, I don't know why syntax, or syntax highlighting isn't working, but it isn't. Um, but basically, this, this will install um, AZD as a dependency, Node, Python. Then I'll set up uh, filters using this path filters thing that will check to see if my infra directory has changed. And if it has, then we can re-trigger an AZD provision so that we can reprovision our infrastructure. And then also um, an SRC kind of filter because I have all my source code in that directory. And if th that code has changed, we can redeploy. Um, and also uh, authentication. So we're authenticating with federated credentials or o OpenID Connect OIDC, which is a security best practice. Um, but yeah, same, same commands under the hood. So I already ran a command called azd pipeline config. And what happens there is that azd will take, um, will basically set up, a ser create a service principle, set up repo secrets and variables so that Azure and GitHub Actions can talk to one another. And then from there, I'll have uh, azd running on my repo for every commit that I'm pushing. So I'm actually just, I think it's more exciting to see that actually work in practice. So I have this to-do app right now. It says like to-do in the top left corner, but I could, you know, um, let's make a small code change. I can do git add dot. We're gonna say, uh, oh, I can't type live, that's scary. Um, and then git push. And so this is gonna push code up. I'm going to also use this like GitHub Actions uh, extension for VS Code that I'm really excited about. It came out uh, not too long ago. But what's really cool is um, I can monitor my CI CD pipeline run from within the editor. And for some reason also the icons are not showing up. Um, but anyway, now I can monitor my pipeline run from within my code space uh, and see kind of progress for each one of these steps. Um, Again, I don't know why the, pro <laughs> the icons aren't showing, but you would see a progress bar for each one of these. So yeah, so that's pretty much the gist of it. Again, we've sh I've talked through kind of like um, what AZD is, what a template is, or what an Azure Developer CLI compatible repo is. Talked about how we provisioned an application or pr packaged an application, provisioned infrastructure, and deployed our code on Azure with AZD up. Um, talked about monitoring infrastructure and setting up dashboards with AZD, and then finally showed AZD can run also in CI. Um, so yeah, with that and then the spirit of not leaving code spaces, I'm going to show a slide in code spaces. Um, I'm going to close this off and I'm going to make this larger. But basically this is a link to all of the, everything you need for AZD. So this includes links to install AZD, our documentation, uh, a link to our open source repo for the actual CLI itself as well as our VS code extension. Um, we host community standups once a month on live streamed on Twitch and on YouTube. Um, my co-PM Grace and I host them together. Um, and uh, this will link you to like a playlist of past ones, but they, every, every uh, standup follows our monthly release. So definitely check that out. We talk about new features, do demos, show different templates that people are building in the AZD ecosystem. Um, and then finally, we have a template gallery website, uh, Awesome AZD, which has both Microsoft authored open source repos as well as community authored repos that show how you can use the Azure Developer CLI to get basically any application up on Azure. Uh, today, AZD supports uh, Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, .NET, and Java, and all kinds of Azure compute targets. So uh, app service, static web apps, uh, spring apps, Azure functions, uh, Azure Kubernetes service, basically everything you need. Um, but yeah, I'll also just leave it uh, here and you can also check out some of the templates that we have. But with that, thanks so much for joining. <laughs>